is venture capital a con game or is venture capital a legitimate way of making money? Uh, this video is a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time because I have some pretty controversial and non-traditional opinions on the world of venture capital and private equity. So in this video, I'll be breaking down what venture capital and private equity is. I'll explain how these firms are structured, uh, how they make money, how they source deals, and, how, and also how they build up all this hype to make these successful exits for companies that lose billions of dollars yet are somehow valued at billions of dollars. Maybe that might be a sneak peek into why I don't think venture capital is necessarily the most legitimate way of making money. So without further ado, let's get into the basic definition of what venture capital and private equity is. So typically I like to create my own definitions for various things, but for this video, I'd like to borrow somebody else's definition for venture capital and private equity and just read it off to you. So venture capital is a form of private equity financing that is provided by venture capital firms or funds to startups, early stage and emerging companies that have been deemed to have high growth potential or which have demonstrated high growth in terms of number of employees, annual revenue, scale of operations, etc. And venture capital firms are essentially funds that invest in these early stage companies in exchange for equity or for ownership stake. And venture capitalists are people or entities that take on the risk of financing these risky startups and the hopes that these risky startups will eventually lead to a profitable exit uh, that results in the venture capital firm or the, uh, the equity partners uh, making some type of profit from their investment. So that's essentially what venture capital is, what private equity is, but moving forward, let me talk about how uh, your basic private equity and or venture capital firm is structured. So when we look at venture capital and private equity, a typical firm is basically raising a fund from wealthy investors or entities to invest that fund into some type of startup or other financial instrument in the hopes that they can leverage their capital to make a high ROI or return on investment. So when you look at these venture capital firms and private equity uh, firms, think of like this fund, this big pool of money that's gonna be used to invest into some type of company or financial instrument. But that fund can only be created through the use of, through partners. And so at a VC firm, you're gonna have what you call general partners and limited partners. So your general partners, these are the individuals who are tasked with managing the daily operations of the fund. Like they're the people who have hands-on access and control to how and where this money is invested. Um, whereas these limited partners are individuals or are other entities that are just strictly investing their money into the fund. Like they only have a limited liability because they're not actually managing the allocation of the funds. They're just the people who may be sourcing deals or they just may be the people who are investing their capital to be managed by the general partners. So just think about the LPs on the top of the pyramid. These are the people with the money and then below them are the general partners. And these are the people managing the money because a GP can be an LP, but an LP can't be a GP. So you have the LPs, the GPs, and then you have the GPs, you know, directly controlling the fund or funds that are within this particular uh, venture capital or private equity firm. So now that we got the basic definitions and structure of venture capital and private equity firms out the way, let's get into the more fun, the juicy stuff of how these VC firms and venture capitalists, how they make money. Well, when it comes to the, the general partners, the GPs, 
there's this infamous standard on Wall Street called the 220 rule or the 22 rule, depending on how uh, you want to state it. But essentially, every GP within a venture capital firm will charge people a 2% management fee. And so this management fee is an automatic 2% of the entire fund, let's say value. So if this is a, a million dollar fund, you know, 2% of uh, a million dollars, I believe that's $20,000. Like that fee is going to be taken off the top by these GPs to pay their salary and you know, the daily operational materials uh, for the, um, or the operational processes for the fund. So this is why these funds normally have, you know, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, because the, the larger the fund, the, the more the management fee can be. So that's the 2%. But then the 20% is called like the carry. And so essentially, if this fund were to be profitable, if there were to say this, they invested this fund a million dollars and they got a million dollars worth of profit, 20% or $200,000 would be taken out by the, the GPs for their, for their pockets. So the, the, the 22 rule essentially is a 2% standard fund management fee, but then the 20% is this carry or basically this uh, profit fee that the uh, GPs will take. And then based upon the, the cap tables and the percentages of investments and you know all these other factors, uh, that determines how the LPs will will get their percentage of uh, the revenue cuts uh, of the of the profits per se. So just remember that that's how your typical VC firm makes their money is the two percent. Uh, management fee, but then the 20% carry that's for the GPs. And then for like the LPs based upon the cap table and other kind of like detailed extraneous factors, they get a percentage of revenue based upon how those uh, investments were structured. Now let's really get into the fun stuff. This is where the controversy begins. Cause as I mentioned earlier, you know, there's this 20, uh, two rule that they have on, on Wall Street when it comes to how these VC firms uh, make their, their standard profits. But let's look at how a lot of these investments become valued at such astronomical levels. Because as I said earlier in the video, these VC firms invest capital into high growth, early stage startups. So the central idea is for venture capitalists to invest their money into a company and have this company grow and scale to a level where they're worth more uh, after they received investments than, than prior. And so that's just the simple fundamental way that this game works is that I give you $1 today, tomorrow you give me $10 back. You know, we have the famous kind of 10x rule in the in the venture capital world but this is where things get really really muddy because what happens is that these high growth startups typically are not profitable they lose money all the time the majority of these high growth tech startups do not make money and so what you, what you have is you have a lot of these venture capital and private equity firms investing in these companies to help them achieve a certain level of growth because when they reach this level of growth, they can have a perceived valuation that is positive. And when these companies have this perceived valuation, the goal is to get them to an exit because this exit is where that investment return is realized because before there's an exit, everything is just on paper. It's not real. So you have these companies who receive, let's say raise a hundred million dollars worth of uh, venture capital, but they spend it all to achieve this growth. But because they have grown to a certain amount of users, they may be worth, let's say a billion dollars. And so when they get to that infamous exit, which is either an acquisition or an initial public offering, 
uh, the, the golden, the holy grail is the initial public offering. This is where these VC companies get this incredible 10x or higher return on their money that they invested. But there's a major problem with this, and I'm gonna go into detail in a few seconds. The core essence of the venture capital con game lies in the extreme and egregious subjectivity of these valuations. Let's just act like we have ration and reason here. How in the hell can a company that loses hundreds of millions or billions of dollars somehow be worth or valued at a positive hundreds of millions or billions of dollars? How is that possible? How is it possible that a, that a company's valuation is a multiplier of future projected revenues that don't even exist yet? Well, I'll tell you, this is basically market manipulation 101, because essentially these valuations are crafted by three entities that have their own private interests in mind. You have the VC firms, you have, bank, you have, you have banks, and you have the media all working together to hype up this world of venture capital to keep these people wealthier than they really should be. Because think about it, all these valuations are done privately. You have the same venture capitalists bringing in their friends and their homies to invest in these companies. Then after they're, they're, these companies raise all this money, they've grown to a certain level, then they go to these private banks who they have to clear and approve a lot of these initial public offerings. And when they do that, these banks get a nice little fee for that. So these banks and these venture capital firms are in, are in it together because they both want to make money off of this deal. And then also like the media is what who fuels the, fo uh, fuels the fire of the Silicon Valley, of the big super entrepreneur and how Wall Street is making all this money and how the economy is so great. And it's when you really peel back the, the layers of the onion, you, you realize it's all BS. So you have these VC firms, banks, and the media all working together to manipulate the market into thinking that these startups are worth more than what they really are. Because if you look at me and, and my small business, I may be making, let's say, six figures. With that six figures, that's what I'm valued at. I can't go to a bank and be like, you know what, I'm making six figures, but you know, I'm really worth seven figures. You know, I made 100 last year, 100,000, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really worth a million. The bank's gonna look at me like I'm an idiot. They're gonna be like, no, you're not even worth $100,000. You know, you might have your mortgage, you might have other expenses, you might have credit card debt. Like they're gonna look at my, my complete net worth and they're gonna deduct everything. And then they're gonna be like, this is what you're really worth. But for some reason with these uh, startups and these VC firms and these initial public offerings, you have companies that literally spend billions of dollars, haven't made one penny worth of profit because revenue is not profit. Profit equals revenue minus expenses. You have these companies not not making hardly any revenue, but they've burned all this money. Uh, they have all these expenses, these operation costs. They have a negative bloody red balance sheet, but yet somehow they're worth positive hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. This is what you call market manipulation 101. But because the masses are ignorant to how things really work, this is somehow deemed acceptable when it's really not. So in some venture capital, private equity, it's not really that complicated. Like they try to make it seem like you have these sophisticated, super intelligent investors, that they're smarter than the average person. This is why they make all this money. But when you really peel back, like I said, the layers of the onion, and you look at everything fundamentally without a bias, and you look at it through intelligence, and you just ask, basic questions like what are your customer acquisition costs what is the lifetime value of your customer what is your net income not revenue revenue means absolutely nothing like just focus on lifetime value customer acquisition cost net income 
you, you, you look through those lenses at a lot of these companies and you really see that like venture capital is really overhyped, but at the end of the day, like it's really market manipulation. Like companies who lose billions of dollars should not be positively valued at billions of dollars, but there's reasons as to why that happens. I won't get into that on this video, but yeah, this is just simply venture capital one-on-one. -on -one. You have people raising a big pool of money to invest it into a startup that they want to scale to a high growth opportunity with a lot of users, a lot of traction, and they want to have a big exit. They have a big exit through an acquisition or IPO, and that's how they make a ton of money. Like that's venture capital 101. So with all that out the way, my question for you today is, is it fair that VCs can make billions of dollars off companies that lose billions of dollars? I'm super curious to hear your thoughts and please be sure to drop your comments below. Furthermore, if you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can start this process today by subscribing to this channel. Also, please be sure to, to click the notification bell to be alerted for whenever new content drops. See you next week. Thank you.